Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Romans chapter 3 verse 6, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6, and John chapter 2 verse 10. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord God for this word. Thank you for being with us and helping us to understand your words. Lord Jesus, bring clarity and understanding now. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Romans chapter three, verse six, by no means, for then how could God judge the world? All right. And so um, here, this is basically where Paul is speaking to the Romans um, about the fact that well, he had been preaching, you know, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound, right? Um, that, you know, the grace of God is great. It is mighty. It is a gift from him. And so um, this gospel is a gift from him. It is a gift of his grace. And so um, we don't deserve it. And yet he still gives it freely. And so um it, this response of by no means is basically speaking to the people twisting his words and making this um, grace into some extreme that says, oh, just go out and have sin and and it's going to make God look better. Right. And he, he says he didn't say that, you know, they're they're twisting his words and he's he's saying um, by no means to that um, um wording is that um it justifies um god is wrong for um judging them because um their sin makes him look good and he's saying by no means it says for then how could god judge the world um god is is a just god he is a loving god he is a good god and his grace abounds towards us and that's that is that a permission slip to go sin no but it means that you know god's grace is great um sending his son was a great gift to us and we need to be thankful for it and we need to walk and abide in Christ because he has given us such a great gift amen all right and so Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel all right and this is speaking of the mystery of the gospel. So the first one, Romans 3, 6, is, is basically speaking to us about the fact of like a, a wise bride talking to an unwise bride, right? The wise bride is twisting the words of the gospel. She wants to lean on the law. She does not want to lean on grace. She does not want to lean on Christ. She wants to lean on um, what she feels is her righteousness, right? And and um, Paul is, is on the other end saying, you know, this gift of eternal life through Christ is free. Um, this grace that he has given us is free it's not a license to sin by any means right it is a, a um a forgiveness and atonement for sin right um that doesn't say go out in sin that means that the sin that has been committed is is forgiven and will be forgiven right and so you know we need to abide in him we need to stay with Christ. That is that a free license? It is definitely not. And and that is how the world works. And that is how the unwise bride works. She wants a free pass, right? Or she wants to manipulate those who believe in grace um, to um say that, you know, we're we're telling everybody to sin or that, you know, that's how the devil works. And and you know. The devil wants people to come against each other. He wants division in the faith. He doesn't want for us to be united. God's grace is great, but um, that is not a license to sin. That's a manipulation of the devil. Um, extreme grace of, of just doing whatever you want and calling Christ your Lord. That is a manipulation of the devil, right? But at the same time, um, 
um, those who don't believe in grace, who want to lean on their own righteousness, who want to lean on the law, that has been a manipulation of the devil as well. So God is wanting um, us to come out of that. No twisting of words, no, no lies from the enemy. Um, he wants us to stay on track with him and not believe the lies and fall for things like that. And so Ephesians 3, 6 is talking about the mystery of the gospel. So it says this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs. Um, so they didn't realize that before, right? They were God's chosen people. And, you know, they thought this was a Jewish thing, a Hebrew thing, the Messiah, you know, there were whispers of things, but they didn't have a clarity that Christ's death was atonement for all men, right? And so it says this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, meaning like the body of Christ. And it says, and partakers of the promise in Christ through the gospel. And so this gospel, this good news, this gift of grace um, was the thing that um, caused um us all to be able to be on equal footing, right? Um, is that a license to sin because Christ died once for all sin? No, by no means, right? Um, that is that is not evidence of faith. That is evidence of a lack of abide. That is evidence of a lack of lordship. But the sin that is committed is atoned for for those who are abiding, for those who are making him his Lord, our Lord, um, over their lives. And so um, the third verse that the Lord gave me was John chapter two, verse 10, and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine, but you have kept the good wine until now. All right. And so this is speaking about um, the fact of Christ, you know, our salvation is a wonderful thing. Um, it is very complex. It is in the redemption in itself is very complex. Um, but these mystery of the gospel, um, this free gift is a wonderful gift of grace. But God has even more in store and it's coming in the city to come, right? It's, it's a part of the rewards. And it says, and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. So most of the religions of the world, most of the, the um, things of life, usually that are good come in our youth and come first, right? While, while we're at the peak or the pride of life, right? And so, um, but here it says, everyone serves a good wine first. And when people have drunk freely, so drunken freely of that goodness, drunken freely of, of that pride and, and all of those, the, the religions of the world and things, it says, then the poor wine. Right. So all the leftovers, all the the remnants of, of trying to still make it your best life and keep up with other people, you know, the leftovers. And so it says, but you have kept the good wine until now. So the best is yet to come for the believer, unlike other religions of the world. Um, the believer has something to look forward to. The believer is is a person who it gets better for, right? Eternal life is a greater state than the life that we lead now. So salvation is a wonderful gift that God gave us of grace, um, of freedom, of, of atonement. But that's not the end of the story. That's only the beginning, right? Because this redemption is going to show to be even greater. This salvation is going to be shown to be even greater than we could have ever asked or think. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for showing yourself strong and mighty in our lives. Lord God, we ask you, Jesus, to 
be with us, be our standard, be our friend, be our Lord, our love, Lord. Help us to stay next to you and abide in you, Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would, who would like to receive Christ as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer and the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption and no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church, the Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth and he's going to do just that, amen. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word, and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Amen. All right. And so um, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. And then also go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.